y'all doing today? Okay, love that, love that Thursday afternoon. My name is Camille Mims, and this is the LISD final business pitch for the incubators here in um, here at Louisville High School. Exciting! Like, can we get a <laughs> can we get a? We know where we are. Uh, I'm super honored to be here, and for many reasons. One of them is I am an LHS alumni, and I'm also, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then I also was in the first ever incubator EDU class at LA, LHS, and I'm, I'm offered, and I'm so honored to be here and be back for this. Um, so just to give you guys a little background of what the incubator is, if you don't understand the program, um, the incubator is a class that is designed to take students step by step of what it's like to run a business and start a business. The students are equipped with class lessons that teach everything to learn from build, building a team, building a budget, how to find vendors and manufacturers, and they're even paired with local entrepreneurship veterans um, to help further them and create their product or service. Uh, the program would not be possible without the assistance from our community volunteers, so if you are a coach or a mentor, please stand up so we can clap for you. None of this would be possible without you guys, and I can say from experience, none of this could be possible without you guys. Um, and please help me welcoming our sponsors who have made all of this possible. We have the City of Louisville, the Mary Kay Corporation, and the Hudson Foundation. Because of general, generous grants to the City of Louisville and through the interlocal agreement with the school district, the Hudson Foundation and Mary Kay provided a bulk, bulk of the funding that allowed the incubator EDU curriculum to be purchased and for the program to continue for the last four years at LHS. The Louisville ISD Education Foundation has also been a financial supporter for the last four years. If you represent one of these following sponsoring organizations, please stand and be recognized. The City of Louisville, the Mary Kay Foundation, the MR and Evelyn Hudson Foundation, and the LISD Education Foundation. And if all the LHS school and LISD administrators um, please stand up, along with the LISD board members, if we have any in the building. Lovely, lovely. They played a great role in creating and working with the incubator program, and we just want to make sure that everybody is recognized tonight. Um, and we also have one more recognition, Miss Cooper. Miss Cooper is the one that holds it all down for everybody. It would not be done without her. She's an amazing teacher, and she is the one that we need to make this class thrive and succeed. And finally, we want to thank our LISD superintendent, Dr. Lori Rapp, for her guidance and support for this program. So to give you guys an idea of all, how all of this is going to work tonight, we have four teams who are presenting for our judges today. These teams won their competitions throughout the year in order to be presenting here tonight. We started here with nine teams. We made it down to four. And this is the finals. Each team will walk out, walk out onto the stage where they have 10 minutes to make their presentation. And the judges will have the opportunity to ask questions and figure them out. We ask that the audience welcome and cheer on each team as they're introduced. However, please refrain from comments during their questioning and during their presentation and answer period in order for the judges and the team members to be able to hear each other correctly. After that, once they walk off stage, you can go back to clapping and supporting your, your kids, all right, moms and dads, like brothers and sisters, like wait till they walk off stage, then we can go back to clapping. Then we'll have a little fun during that time once they go off, once the judges are finished listening to all the performers, the judges will go off and then deliberate on which team will be the winner. Then we'll have a little fun during that time with you guys, letting you know who you think will win the, the grand prize. So now it's time to meet our special judges for tonight. First, we have Bob Troyer, councilman with the city of Louisville. Next, we have Cheyenne Goings from the Mary Kay Global. Harold Strong, CEO of Code Stream Studios. 
And finally, Lori Fickling, president of the Louisville Area Chamber of Commerce. Is everybody ready to meet our first team for the night? All right. So let's welcome team number one. Here is Moika with Plant em Up. Hello everyone, um, my name is Nawaka and I'm a jewelry maker and a Palmer clay artist. Um, about me is um, I'm a one person business. Um, I just run. I make jewelry out of Palmer clay and other many miscellaneous uh, objects. Um, a problem and solution we first faced was um, lack of durability in our products and making sure they're not foldable and um, heavy on our customers' ears. We also wanted to make sure they're vibrant and that they're pleasing to the eye. And then compared to, we also need um, another. Um, our jewelry and pricing, our jewelry ranges from three to five dollars depending on the batches. We make about 20 to 30 batches per month or per week depending. And this is also another example of our products. How our $250 was spent, we spent half of it on shipping boxes and packaging for our earrings. We also spent money for various molds to measure out our products and also a pasta machine roller to make it more efficient to roll out our clay. How we promote our business is through family, friends, and friends of family, and also through many other social medias such as like Instagram, Snapchat. And we asked for about around $15,000. This will also cover shipping and restocking our products. And a credits to a great friend of mine. Her name is Ubi Doobie. Um, she's a very talented artist. She helped um, design my logo and our business cards. And she did a great job of designing my anthropomorphic character. Her name is Ganya. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, please ask now. All right, Moika, I'm just gonna see if the judges have any questions for you guys, judges. Thanks, Moika, that was a great presentation. <laughs> um, great presentation. Um, what did you learn most uh, since the last presentation and how did you use, using the $250 help you in learning that? Um, it helped with, um, it helped with like measuring our products spending our money wisely for um, clay and also on the materials. Yeah. So, so did your volume increase in the amount of units that you sold? Yes. By a bunch or can you give me a percentage or some kind of? I'd say about like around 50%. We've already started selling out our products already. We've made around $33 just wow. alone off the earnings. So you say we, how big is your operation? Just me for now. <laughs> so we is me, but scaling could be a challenge, so you might want to think about cloning yourself. <laughs> but thank you very much. Excellent presentation. Congratulations. Thank you. Hi. Um, I love how creative your designs are. I'm just curious to know, how did you know what to give your consumers? Like, did they like the cupcakes more and the teddy bears? Or there, was there any research that you were able to do to figure out which ones were your top sellers and which ones you should keep making? Um, based off the feedback I've received, a lot of our customers do like the cupcakes. Um, we did try to like expand how we made them. So we've added sprinkles to them, chocolate dipping sauce, stuff like that. We've also branched out to make stud earrings instead of the hook earrings. And we've also branched out to making necklaces 
which we are still working on as of now, since they take a lot of time to make. So, yeah. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Can we go back to your contact page? I want to follow you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, so obviously I'm partial to jewelry, so um, I love what you're doing. I think it's pretty low price point. I hope that you can get that up a little bit because the value's there, I'm sure. So, uh, great job. I love it. Um, keep doing it. And good luck being a solo. You're very brave. <laughs> Thank you. I was <clears throat> curious. You talked about the, the weight. How did, you know, what did you change to... We actually change. Oh, go ahead. We changed how we measure them. We now measure them in a little silicone mold, which is very easy. We just put the clay in it, and then we just pop it out. It's like measured from a silicone. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it's measured as a silicone mold, but it's in a certain shape, and we just pop it out and bake it. One last question: uh, How do you um, plan to use the fifteen hundred dollars? We plan to restock more products such as like boxes, clay, and also using it to ship out people who also like my products too. So do do your customer use the Instagram and, and those kinds of things to kind of tell you what they're looking for and you respond to that? Or do you tell them, here's what I have available? For now, I tell them what I have available so they okay. know the what I make and what I'm capable of doing. But I think if you're going to do custom, that's where Lori's conversation comes in by increasing the price because obviously the product is good. You don't have a lot in stock. So when quantity drops, price should increase. Just hint. <laughs> and who, is, yeah. uh, is the pasta maker a common tool for clay artists? Or did you think that up yourself? A pasta uh, machine? I, I mean, it's kind of used amongst the it clay is. community. Yes, it's pretty pretty genius. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. All righty, everyone. Let's give it up for Moika with Plantamo. <laughs> Let's move on to the next team who has an idea about the way they change to see the world. Please welcome Paulina, Seth, and Jonathan with Radiant. My name is Seth. I'm Jonathan. And my name is Paulina. We are Radiant. Are you tired of the unrealistic beauty standards set by today's society? <laughs> I agree. Well, for those who think that the unrealistic beauty standards set by today's society need to be changed, we are Radiant, a social media marketing company that seeks to rebrand society's beauty standards while expressing while expressing people's self-confidence. For teens and young adults that need help with self-confidence, we will rebrand society's beauty standards, and we will do this by promoting different cultures, ethnicities, and people all around the world. Our unique value proposition. We're expressing individuality and self-confidence. We're creating an impact on the mar marketing and modeling industry by promoting many different cultures, ethnicities, and to people all around the world. A problem that we see around the world today is that a lot of uh, social media and advertisers, marketings, advertise unrealistic standards that are hard to attain by young adults and teens, and we believe that it has a negative impact on them both physical and mental? For example, Miss 2019, Chesley Christ, struggled with depression. She died at the age of 30. Today, she would have turned 31. And if you, could everyone please join me for a moment of silence? Thank you. Our solution to this problem is to define, is to redefine the beauty standards of today 
and we want to express individuality and self-confidence. A competitive analysts are other photography companies and modeling agencies, but we don't really see them as a big competitors because we, we see ourselves as very competitive in the market, and we believe we can make a true impact in the industry. Uh, this is our financial model for the up to the first three years. And the first year, uh, we're going to be expanding our company by hiring people and uh, just overall expanding, reaching out to clients. Um, by the third year, we'll be making profit. Uh, we hope to charge clients $150 per shoot, and any further amount will be used to market their uh, product or, or business. Uh, we hope to pay our models uh, $50 for a shoot that will be under four hours. Anything after that, we hope to, we hope to pay them $100 or more. We will be marketing through mostly through social media. Like our main platform will be Instagram, but we also have like secondary platforms like uh, Twitter, Facebook, and maybe even TikTok. We will create a website where we will post all of our photos and all of the promotions we do. Our main target market will be young teens and uh, young adults, that are men and women, who are often active on social media. We interviewed um, around over 100 people, and 95% of them agreed with our idea, and like there's a problem, and they agreed with our solution to fixing that problem. The 5% that didn't agree with us, or like didn't see much of a problem with today's beauty standards, mostly didn't use social media. What we did, what we did with the funding, we used the money, the two hundred fifty dollars we received in funding, to buy a green screen, camera, lights, and props. We also used to use some of the money to pay our models, and uh, I would like to showcase our uh, prototype uh, photos, showcasing our models, Alyssa and Josue, and here they are on stage. We were farmers market's favorite with 201 votes, which was six times more than second place. So what's next? And what are our future plans? We're asking for 2,500, I'm sorry, $2,500. And this will go towards an LLC as well as to copyright our photos, which we'll be producing. We're looking to hire new people to help us expand and expand our work quality, and provide customers with the best service and satisfaction. Like, for example, in the next coming months, we hope to hire a dedicated editor to join our team to be a um, proper member of our company. I would like to give a big thank you to Ms. Cooper, our mentor, Mike Smart, our families all for being here, and the judges for being here today. With that being said, do you all have any questions for us? Okay, I'll start. Um, so walk me through, am I on? I don't even know if I'm on. Uh, walk me through what you do with the photographs. Once you, are, okay, first of all, are you using models that are not the typical model profile, right? Yes. And then what do you do with the photos? What, what's the purpose of the photo? Okay, so basically our goal is to partner with different companies, small businesses, anyone that wants to use our service to market maybe a product, okay. their company. Okay. So basically we're partnering up with whoever needs our services. So you put their clothes on your models? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Also, if they want, we can do the marketing for them on our social media platforms, mm -hmm. but it's not required. Awesome. Okay, well, you guys look very nice too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to add something, or would you like... I would like to add that uh, we plan on adapting to our customers' needs, you know, evolving with what they want and what they need. So is there a specific, great presentation, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, so is there a specific market or segment of the market you're focused on? Is it, I noticed there was a kid in hard hat and a girl, kind of a jeans gap, 
look? Yes. Is there a specific market that you're looking for, or is it anyone who wants to use your services? Exactly. Anyone that agrees with our message, with what we're trying to do. If you need our services and you want to market things in a different way, you want to impact the market in a healthy way, then you would hire us to help you with that. And like as you saw, we can also do like jewelry, like because yeah, we can just do jewelry. We can do like hard hats, hats, just ha almost anything. Anything. We can actually partner up with other small businesses that you see here today. We can do their marketing. Maybe anyone here own a business. We can do y'all's marketing. So when you say marketing, are you saying the photo, or are you also saying the, the social media campaign around that? Mm -hmm. We can actually do both. Uh, we adapt to what you need. And, and so is that part of the $2,500 ask in terms of how that works as well? Well, for that, uh, we our social media, we're managing that on our own. And okay. that, it won't cost us much besides the basic advertising. However, the $2,500, that will be used towards the copyright and the LLC, more of the legal work. Yeah, and uh, also some of that will be going towards paying like different models we hire and uh, keeping cost. And, and so last question, it's, are there, do you have a portfolio of models that you use? Do you have like 10 or 12 that you can always call on, on standby or how does that work? At the moment we do have five that I know of. Okay. We're looking to expand and we're also looking to hire an editor that can help us with the editing. So that's also what, we, what the $2,500 would be used for. Thank you. And we would also get like a camera lens to like help <coughs> further the quality of the photos. Cool. Have you been successful so far at, at getting companies to um, use your services? Have you done any? Have yes, done I have done some networking and okay. I have talked to a few companies and <laughs> they see what we're trying to do. They agree with the message. They're just waiting for us to be able to hire that editor to be able to do the work for them. Uh, in the near future, we also hope to reach out to local boutique shops and see if they want to partner up with us and uh, market their products. You said networking, I'm so proud. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question around the editor. So around the premise that social media is a, is a problem, right? 95% mm -hmm. of the people that you interviewed said that it was. Do you think that there's a true need for an editor in, t in the sense that a lot of photos that we see are photoshopped and, and aren't really reflective of what the product is? Yes, so the reason we want an editor is just to adjust the background, basically. Not a lot to you know, do Photoshop on the model herself or himself. It's more of the background, adjust the lighting, stuff like that, it's nothing. We want to stick to our mission and our we want our integrity to, you know, still be the main focus of our company. Awesome, thank who, you. Who has thank been you. taking the photos so far? Uh, I have. Seth. Yeah, he's our dedicated <laughs> photographer. Awesome. Do y'all have any more questions? That's great. No, great job. Thank you so much for the feedback. Thank you. Great job, great job, Team Radiant. That was Paulina, Seth, and Jonathan. How's everybody feeling out here? We're good? Okay. Two down, we got two more to go. Let's meet team three, snapped in privacy with Kaya, Henry, and Mason. We are Snapped in Privacy. My name is Kaya. My name is Mason. And my name is Henry. So main problem, uh, main problems with and pain points with cases nowadays is fall protection. They're not very protected. Allows cracks and scratches to get through the case. And we also have uh, wireless charging problems with, I know I, with my case, I can't wirelessly charge. As well as it's very hard to get off. So if you need to take the case off, you, it, you know, it takes you a couple seconds. Our solution is the easy to snap on and snap off process. It's wirelessly charged capability and it has fall protection. It's made to compress the shock of the fall and absorb it so it doesn't break the car or it, <laughs> it doesn't break the phone. 
And also we have a hidden cash and credit card department that is RFID protected. The RFID plate is on the top half of the phone, so it protects the chip in the credit card but still allows you to wirelessly charge. And we also, we also have a privacy feature that allows your phone to be in, you can't see, it's, it's very invisible uh, through the side, so no one can peek over your shoulder, no one can look from the side, see what you're doing on your phone. Our unique value proposition, maintaining your mobile world, keeping it private and safe, as well still staying appealing and effective. We spent around, uh, we, we have 90 left of the seed money that we got from our presentation about two months ago. It was around $250. We have, uh, from that money, we now have tools for production. We also have numerous phone cases for testing and prototyping through Fiverr. Our customer segment has changed from uh, teens, teens and young adults to people ages 14 through 65 and above. We plan on channeling our product through our own website that we are currently working on as well as through popular uh, social media sites. So as you can see, this is our financial model. This is the startup cost where we are spending on administrative costs, development costs, and marketing costs. So this is our second part. This will be with our price point of $35 per case. It is increasing in value, and we will end up with around $300,000 by year three. So our asking price is $3,750, and we will use this for our LLC, the R&D, which is the research and development for five prototypes, tools, and marketing. So our feedback, we did over 100 interviews, and they helped us render our prototype, and we got the privacy feature. They wanted to, they, they added that in there, and it was very popular like. So our timeline of our product. This is our first prototype. It's been through a lot of testing. Um, we use this on drop test. We also use it to, with a Dremel. We took out the hinges that were in it. We put our own. We put our own snaps, um, and it's also glued on. And then this is our final prototype. So this is our final. We went through Fiverr, which is a 3D prototyping app. Um, and we put the credit card part right here. This is going to be the privacy screen and this is gonna represent the snaps. So we wanna shout out to Mrs. Cooper, our favorite teacher. She's been helping us out through the year with this whole process, and we just wanna really thank her for that. Also, we wanna shout out our mentor, Jared Douglas, who have been helping us through this process and teaching a whole lot about our business. Last but not least, a shout out to our sponsors for uh, supporting our uh, entrepreneurial minds. Thank you, judges, for your time, and do you have any questions for us? I, <clears throat> I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Uh, I'm glad you took care of the, of the charging, uh, contactless charging issue that I raised mm -hmm. a couple months ago. I think it's an excellent, excellent uh, way of doing it. So Thank you, sir. I want to start by saying great job of stating the problem and the solution. That's how you quickly get people to buy into your products. I think you guys did a really great job of that. Um, I'm more curious around uh, your prototypes and your testing. So can you just give a little bit more information on your drop test, like what type of heights or any other testing that you guys perform? Okay, so we actually got a dud phone off Amazon for about you know $18. And we did that and we pretty much you know took it at a height that we normally use our phone. We drop it um, and it has it doesn't have a lot of glass on it, of course the front but we used the back glass, the camera, um, and we saw that it would drop at certain rates, so that's where we discovered that we wanted to make the case where it would you know, compress the shock, kind of like how in a car, and I messed up, I said car, but kind of like how in a car, you know, it's kind of a um, plasticky material, it compresses the shock and makes it safer for people to drive. It's just like the phone, it protects your phone when you drop it. And did you drop it on different materials, on different floors? Yes, we did, we dropped it on concrete, as well as you know, tile floor at school and carpet. <laughs> awesome great job guys thank you. thank you great presentation um so so with the money that you received earlier mm -hmm. what are some of the big lessons learned i guess privacy is one of the big ones uh, of the 100 people you talked to how many raised their hand for privacy and beyond privacy what other things did you learn 
Uh, we learned a lot that privacy was um, a very big thing for our target market. Um, I know that a lot of teens and older adults, they love the privacy. Um, and also we learned that the uh, hidden wallet in the back is a very good idea with the RFID plate. Because I know myself, I carry you know, a credit card, maybe a $20 bill in the back of my phone, and I actually know. Your phone now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always like that. But um, it's a very convenient thing now because uh, not a lot of people like to carry wallets, and most of our interviews, um, a good majority said that they liked it. Um, you also changed the, the grouping of your ideal customer, mm -hmm. and it's now a broad, broader range versus a segmented range. How did that decision come to pass? So we figured that we wanted to have, you know, our target market was going to be teens and young adults, uh, you know, people who buy the phones more often based on our experience. But going through interviews with uh, older groups of people, we discovered that they also like the privacy feature and as well as the hidden, you know, hidden case in the back because now phones, they're always, you know, very bulky and they don't like that. They like something very sleek and this is sleek with, you know, the hidden uh, part in the back for your credit card. Um, so we changed our target market to uh, the higher rate. And so the final question is with, the, is it 3,800? Uh, yeah, around 3750. So what do you hope to achieve with that if, if you're awarded that? So with that, we will do the five rounds of prototyping. Um, we do want to do additional prototyping through Fiverr. We also want to market it um, through our website. And we also have to build that through a nine month span of next school year. And it is a costly monthly amount of 100 per month. So that's also included in it and tools and stuff. Thank you. Can we touch those? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, I'll bring them to you. Okay, you were talking about snaps. Yes. Mm -hmm. what, is, what are you talking about? So the snaps, here's, the, here's our final prototype, and it's just 3D printed. Uh, but the snaps kind of, so think of this, think of this as the back of the phone, yeah. and this is you know the front, so it'll kind of come onto the phone, and it's got oh, these that. tiny little snaps, and it keeps it secure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great presentation. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. One more. <clears throat> you are uh, looking at very dis different sizes, too. I mean, are you just start concentrating on one form okay. factor for that? Um, that is a very good question, and we have thought about that. We are going to start out with, you know, the more generic phones that are bought now. Uh, normally, you know, the newer iPhones, maybe a year older yeah. um, instead of the new ones. Um, after that, we're going to go down and where we can go, you know, a couple years back once we have more money for prototyping for another size. Um, and also, uh, we're going to do that for Samsungs and other, you know, other phone prices and stuff out there. Yeah. Is that all the questions from the judges we have? All right, let's give it up for Snapped in Privacy. Thank you. That was cool. I, didn't, I couldn't have even think to make something like that, but kudos to you guys. All right, and now we are coming up on our last team of the night. Please welcome Avilia, oh, Avilia, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Olivia, uh, Catherine Stephania with Case. Come on. We know how busy working moms are. They have to juggle kids, work, and other everyday challenges which leaves little time for themselves. That's why we made Case Nails, a nail dipping system that applies in seconds for on-the-go moms. You just dip your finger in the solution to reel a perfect nail each time. Our goal is to help busy moms feel together in minutes. Always active, always appealing. 
Hello, we are Case Nails, always active, always appealing. I'm Olivia. I'm Catherine. And I'm Estefania. And we also have a fourth team member, Star, who couldn't make it tonight. Our positioning statement as Case is we're helping on-the-go moms feel put together in minutes with the nail dipping system. We found the problem is that busy moms don't have time to go sit in the nail salon. So our solution for this is going to be an on-the-go nail dipping system that applies in minutes. We did an interview and we initially thought that women between the ages of 13 and 25 would be our main target. However, we decided to pivot our main target to busy mothers between the ages of 35 to 45 because teenagers usually have the privilege to go to nail salons, but busy moms don't. In our interviews, we asked three main questions. The first question is how, many, how much will they pay for our product? 25, over 200% said 20 to $25. The second question was, would they buy a subscription based on our product? Everyone said yes. Our third question was, what nail polish they, do the curling used? Most said Sally Hansen, then Etsy, Smith & Colts, and June Soon. So our competitors are better known and they have more experience, but busy mothers rely on reliability and efficiency. That's when our products come in. We're a quick application drying time, which gives the efficiency and reliability that busy mothers deserve. This is our financial model. Our first year, we're hoping to sell 2,000 units and have $50,000 in revenue and $36,000 to $73,000 in net income. And that would de depend on if we're selling them at $250 to $5 for our unit price. Over the three years, we're going to increase in sales and we're gonna keep that price point at $25. And we're hoping to sell $225,000 in product and $159,000 net. And then with our first year, we set our goal as 2,000 units. And if we make that at 250 for each product, we'll um, get, we'll break even at 196 units and 223 units if we, sell, if we make them at $5 a unit. Our marketing tactics are TikTok, Instagram, as well as unboxing and demo videos. The only reason we're not including Facebook is because we realize it doesn't have our best interest in mind. Uh, this is a concept of what we would like our website to look like. It will offer two options for the color as well as the remover. And for the subscription base, we would offer a monthly, a quarterly, and a year subscription, which would include the color of your choice as well as the remover. Last time we received 250, we used this money to, for, to buy boxes as well as the fillers in the containers. This is an example of how our boxes might look like. We have $120 left. What we've done since then is we've normalized our idea, talked to Mary Kay, and are currently setting up an appointment with a scientist. And today we're asking for $5,000 for packaging cost and product development, which we're speaking to a scientist about right now. And um, this is also, like she said, our, our example, and this is if you had a one-time purchase and our logo on the front. Um, and a special thank you to Ms. Cooper and Josh for helping us all along the way. We couldn't have done it without you. And then what questions do you have for us? And as I don't understand, I don't, <clears throat> don't necessarily understand the chemistry. Uh, I'm also not a user, I don't think. Uh, but uh, my one question is, what keeps the solution from coloring your fingers and not just your nails? Um, currently, we're not um, sure on exactly what chemical that is. That's why we have a meeting set up with a scientist. We gave okay. him our top questions <clears throat> for that, but we do know that it can be done. Okay. Second question is, <clears throat> you have a subscription that would cover two colors, right? So you, you're yes, correct. That's okay. our first plan. Uh, my wife changes her colors about four times a month, so <laughs> <laughs> um, we're and definitely she doesn't use the same two any times. So. Yeah, for sure. We're definitely thinking about doing an add-on option for people who like to change it up. So it's exciting to hear that you've already reached out to scientists back at the Mary Kay building, so kudos to doing that. Um, with this type of product, have you all considered just impact to consumers because you will be doing something that's touching the skin? Not sure if you guys have explored um, because it's going to be placed on the skin. Um, yeah, so we've looked into other nail products that do be placed on the skin, um, and there are products that are completely okay for that, also removers that aren't going to be worried about the skin. So we'll make sure it's 100% safe. 
not a big shopper in the market, but um, compared to other pricing and your competitors, where do you fit? Um, okay. Well, so in our interview, so we talked to over 200 people. We did some in-person interviews and online. Um, and compared, so nail dipping, um, dipping is normally done in salons. They're all personal kits that you can do, um, and they're typically um, higher than that. But we did do that interview, and we talked about um, our price point, 20 to $25. And the people that we talked to, that's the best fit price point, and we know that we can get it way under that. That's for the cost of goods, or is that for the retail price? Um, cost of goods is the 250 to $5, but 25 for a retail price. And so will this only be mail order or will you be partnering with retail outlets where mom can roll in and grab it and come back out? Um, so our first step is going to be online um, and doing that partnership and we're hoping to someday possibly do in store as well. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Great job answering the questions. Good job, great presentation. Can this really be done? Because, I mean, honestly, even if you don't have kids at home, it's... Okay. <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. So this is appealing. Yes, for sure. And have they given you some indication that this is actually something that can be done? Yes. Um, we do know that there is some idea that it can be done. There's other products that are similar, not technically for the nails, and there's obviously more steps to it. We're hoping to condense that down to one um, for that to be easy as one step. Wow. Okay. Impressive. Thank you. I know you mentioned that you plan on marketing on uh, TikTok and other social media platforms, but just thinking if you are targeting uh, moms on the go, have you thought about maybe placing your product in retail locations where they frequent, maybe grocery stores or things like that? Um, yes, yeah, so our first step, like I said, will be online, but we're hoping to go in store as well, okay. future. Awesome, thank you. Thank you guys for your time. And before they leave, let me just make sure I get all their names correct one more time since I butchered it before they came up. We have Olivia. Stephania and Catherine, and this is Case. Yes, thank there you go. So there we have it. That was our fourth and final presentation of the night. Um, judges, if you would like to go into your deliberation room and get ready to break that down, you can. Audience and guests, what do you guys think of that? How do you guys think that went? So like I said earlier, the judges have up to $5,000 they can give out tonight. They can either give it to one team or they can divide it up into two teams. Um, as you can tell, the incubator EDU, EDU has been successful at LHS. And now we will hear from the personal experience from three students. First, please welcome Mason Kantowski. How y'all doing? I'm here to talk about my experience in Ms. Cooper's incubator class. I've been in this class for three years since freshman year, and I've actually been in the class with Olivia and Seth, two other participants in this pitch. This class has taught me so much. You have taught me so much, Ms. Cooper. You have taught me so much about business, myself. I kind of grew up in this class, and it also taught me a lot how to speak, <laughs> even though I sometimes have trouble, and also how to walk, you know, how to walk presently and how to act present presently. Basically, how to be a good businessman. I, I, you know, I try really hard in her class and I show that I care and she does the same. And I appreciate her a lot for that. This is definitely going to be my favorite class, I think, ever. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Paulina Sante, uh, Paulina Chavez, there we go. Got my Spanish names mixed up a little bit, my bad. There you go. Hello everyone. <laughs> I wrote a little something. I wanted to talk about my experience with the incubator program. As many might not know, this is actually my first year here. I am a junior. I just moved from Lake Dallas High School. And as you can imagine, you know, moving your junior year of high school into a school where you don't know anyone, 
you walk in, you might expect to see your friends. No. <laughs> I was so nervous starting at a new school. I didn't know anyone, and I had actually not been to school for an entire year due to the pandemic. I remember getting a tour by two amazing students, and the first class I walk into is Ms. Cooper's. I walk in there and I just see Miss Cooper sitting on one side of the table with, what was it? How many kids were on the other sides? <laughs> they were all gathered around her. And it's funny because the class looked so big and all those kids were sitting there with her. I didn't think much about it. I went on about my tour. And I remember that right when I walked in, she greeted me with the biggest smile. That was the first smile I saw when I walked into the school. I want you to know that, Ms. Cooper. And I remember looking at those kids, you know, thinking, you know, this is who I'm gonna be with. But the thing I didn't know was that those group of kids would become my family. That class changed my entire junior year. They have been the highlight of my experience at high school. So when I think back, of my high school experience, some people might think, oh, the parties, you know? The, I don't know, being in a relationship, I'm forever going to remember that class, especially you, Ms. Cooper. Not only did I gain a family, but I also got to experience and create so many wonderful memories while learning about what I'm most passionate about, about which is business as y'all can imagine. <laughs> Words might never capture the true feelings of my experience with Incubator, but just know this. I could never repay from the bottom of my heart. Just know I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paulina. Now we will have Olivia Allen. I'm Olivia, um, and I've actually been in this class since my freshman year and knew I was coming into it since eighth grade, so I've been in here a while, um, some of the first few, and I've absolutely loved every single minute of it. Um, something super cool about Inc. y'all may not know about is that our class sizes are super small, um, definitely about even half of what your normal class sizes are. So everyone in there, we get super close. Everyone knows everything about each other in their business and then outside of school as well. Um, also, Miss Cooper is awesome. I've known her since eighth grade, and she is so loving and nurturing to every single person who's in there. Everyone loves her, even who doesn't have her as a class, um, in her class. We all go in there for lunch. She has a room open for everyone. Now we have like 50 people in there, and everyone just loves Miss Cooper, and they just have a, just such a personal relationship, and we love her so much. So we're so thankful for her in this class. Thank you. And finally, we have Seth Valencia. So I've had Miss Cooper, or I've known Miss Cooper now for three years, and uh, honestly, I didn't even um, I didn't even expect to like meet anyone or like be in be in a class where I can meet a great teacher like Miss Cooper because like in freshman year, I didn't even know about this class until like. Uh, about like halfway through and then uh, one of my teachers with in um, Money Matters with Mason that's how me and him both learned about this uh, Miss Cooper's class and ever since then she's been the best teacher she's had always the greatest <laughs> and um, even though we have small classes it feels like it's a giant class with all the energy every day and like it goes from like 12 people or like 13 to like 50 people just during lunch. That's how many people like love Miss Cooper and always want to be in there. <laughs> uh, so I'd like to thank Miss Cooper for being my teacher. And even whenever I wasn't at school for a year, as <laughs> I'd like to thank you for being a great teacher. So um, while the judges are in the back um, deliberating and deciding on which one is going to win, um, feel free to go back outside and enjoy some hors d'oeuvres in the back um, by 
complimentary of the TECC West Culinary Hospitality Program. Um, yes. There's a couple snacks and treats back there, so um, feel free to do that and check, chat amongst yourself until we come back and meet again. All right, students, if you'll take your seats by your parents for just a minute, the judges are finishing up and they're writing the check as we speak. Is it one or is it two? We shall find out soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for obeying me so quickly, students. All right, so I'm Miss Cooper, if you haven't figured it out by now, and I've had the privilege, the absolute privilege, of working at Louisville High School for the past five years. I have been charging this incubator program for the last four years. It's been the absolute joy of my life to be a part of your student's life and to work with them every single day. If you are a parent or a guardian of a student in my program, will you please stand for a moment? I first and foremost want to thank you for entrusting me with your child for an entire school year and some of you for the last three years. It's been an incredible journey pre-COVID, COVID and beyond. These students, your children, are amazing. They are prepared for whatever life is going to throw at them. They are relentless, they are fierce, they're funny, they haven't lost their sense of humor, and they're just all around incredible young people. And it is my absolute pleasure to spend 90 minutes a day for 180 days with them. Plus, plus, y'all heard lunchtime, which is 60 minutes of uninterrupted children and needs and things. And um, by the way, my fork supply is a little low and my paper towel, so if you want to donate to the cause. <laughs> um, but they are amazing. They never cease to amaze me. They had to work with adults. And let's face it, working with adults, it's kind of a weird kind of opportunity that they haven't quite had yet. Like, you're the only adults that they pretty much had to work with or their bosses. But they have to work with their bosses, with their mentors on a peer-to-mentor level. And so that right there is a huge, huge strength that they're going to have to carry them into the next century of learning. Being able to talk, communicate, receive feedback, take it or leave it, it's huge. If you're a mentor of one of these teams, Thank you. You guys have been with me for so many of the tried and true and wonderful and hard. And Josh, for example, Cooper, he just calls on me. I run in there and, and they send me every crazy idea. And I just say, I'll, I'm on it. I want to also thank my, LA, uh, my LHS administration team. Uh, Monica's story in the background right there. She... Let's thank her, because she got this program off. She has been the administrator of a lifetime. She's been in my corner. She's been in these kids' corners. She's always up checking on us, seeing what we need, uh, following through with these kids. She loves this program. She loves these kids. And she is the one that allows the drop testing and all the fun stuff that we do every day to happen. So I just want to give a thank you to her. You mean so much to me, Miss Story. Thank you for always supporting me and our program. Yeah. And I just, I just really wanted to tell all my students, whatever's about to happen, you won tonight. Let's take a moment to acknowledge that. So fun fact. My first, very first ever DECA president, Mr. Bradley Sykes, is right back here. Bradley? 
he went to school for this, right? And he's doing big things out in the world. And he said tonight he saw two presentations that were college worthy, senior level. You guys, you nailed it. It's, you did it. And I am beyond proud of you. You've got it. Believe in yourself and keep that alive as you go forward into your senior year. No matter what happens tonight, if you get money, if you don't get money, it great if you do. I will see you next year. We're going to keep rocking and rolling. And if you don't, we can still find some bootleg-ish areas to, to launch some startups. Right? Bootstrap. I meant bootstrap, not bootleg. You know what I mean. You know. We'll make it work because we're... We know the hustle. Hey, students, life is like a no matter which way you flip it, the bread comes first, baby. I am so proud of y'all. Great job. All right. Uh, I want to just really quick thank um, Camille Mims for being here tonight to be the MC. She's been my girl since my very first day of teaching, and so has Jackie. And so I want to thank you guys for being a part of the journey. All right, Ms. Ayers, are we ready? Yes, students, please now come up to the stage and stand by your groups. Okay, I think our judges have completed the deliberations of the night, and they are about to start returning in here shortly. Um, in a few minutes, we will finally know who will be the very first team to win the coveted grand prize of the incubator program and possibly go on to compete at a national level. Don't forget that there could be two winners, though, so this might be, everybody might be surprised tonight. <laughs> Judges, welcome back um, from your deliberations. We are excited to hear your thoughts, and I believe Mr. Harold Strong will be the spokesperson for the judges tonight. <laughs> applaud, so she's not here, but thank you, everybody. And I'm a little nervous being so close to these great kids. They did a wonderful job tonight. Can we give them another round of applause? As a struggling entrepreneur, there's a whole lot of time and effort and confidence that needs to be built over time. You're not selling to yourself. If that were true, I wouldn't have a problem being the entrepreneur. You're selling to someone all the time. You're selling to your customer, whoever that may be. And how many times do you have to talk to people that you don't know to find out if they're your customer or not? You probably aren't wealthy enough to fund the company by yourself, so you're selling to in investors, you're selling to angels, venture, family funds. And more than that, if you're retail, you're selling to the stores, to the buyers who don't know you from Adam. And so, and how many other people have they talked to that day, that week, that month, and how do you differentiate yourself from those other competitors. There's a challenge. But the only way you can be successful at it is to start as these kids have started, very young, very new, so that you can absorb all the knowledge that their mentors, the sponsors, their instructors, and a couple of judges maybe, have shared with them to kind of help them 
better. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't award first prize to everyone. But I got to tell you, Lori and I have done this three years, and this was the hardest, the hardest that we've ever had before, honestly. Before there was good effort. We thank you for attending. You look great behind the microphone. Thank you for the slides. That was cute. But it wasn't really thought through as much. The customer wasn't identified or considered. The product was just an idea, and it was a me too idea at best. Oh, I saw this on, on uh, LinkedIn, or LinkedIn, like you guys. I saw this on Instagram. <laughs> I saw this on Instagram. We can do that too. Yeah, let's do it. And you come up with something half-baked. It was, it was easy. You know, you probably had one person who really understood the assignment, went through the process, and it was easy. The, even mom and dad of the other kids understood it. So no big deal. No problem getting out of the room. But tonight it was difficult. And why was it difficult? Think about the situation. We we're just coming out of COVID where we we're still wearing masks, where there is hybrid school. You're trying to get your arms around what my classes are, and you're trying to call customers and product specialists so that you can understand, am I even in the right zip code, not right neighborhood? So all that said, this was a privilege. Thank you so much for all your hard work. I also want to thank uh, the culinary class because that chocolate stuff was tremendous. That was fabulous. Yeah. So, so with all that said, I've, I've trained a lot and worked with a lot of entrepreneurs in the past uh, at federal level, at NSF, at NIH, and all of them follow the same pattern, which these kids did without knowing it, right? So who's your customer? What's your product? What's their unmet need? Big three questions. And they each did that before, not so much. So without further ado, I know you don't care about all this. Who won? So, so this year will be like other years. We couldn't find a single winner, so we have two. And unfortunately, the two that didn't get a prize tonight doesn't mean they didn't win. It means they have more work to do, right? And that work may be to identify who your customer is or get a better grip on product situations. And we're happy to talk offline if you want to because we took a pretty deep dive in the conversation. But here we go. So let's talk about who the runner up is. I got no drum, do we have drum roll? At least we're, thank you. So, so with scoring as the runner-up to the prize, will a representative from Snapped in Privacy step up? <laughs> Congratulations, there's a big giant check coming your way. Don't cash it soon. I don't know if that, that may get you. But anyway, we've awarded, they received $2,000. <laughs> Okay, I'll just step to the side here. Can't help. I could have done that. <laughs> Dramatic pause. <laughs> okay, congratulations again. All righty, so uh, grand prize, first place. And again, let me reiterate, there are three teams here. One team wins. The other two don't lose. They do more work. We clear with that? We clear with all this? I don't want to hear anything out of you guys. <laughs> all right, so grand prize winner is Plantamo. Did I say that right? <laughs> Come on over here, bro. I'm going to go to
there may be some people happy in the audience, I'm not sure. That table over there especially. Congratulations, congratulations. So we're excited about this. Uh, I could cry. Uh, but thank you everybody for allowing us to be judges again. Thank you kids for doing such a great job. Thank you LSD for having us. Good night. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the fourth annual LISD Incubator Pitch Night in the books, with the grand prize winner being Moika from Plantamo, and who's everybody else? There we go. Kaya, Henry, and Mason from Snapton Privacy.